Hi! Today we're going to look at Dolby's brand new tool for live mixing, the Dolby Atmos Live Panner. The Dolby Atmos Live Panner will enable any venue to transform their existing room into a fully immersive space for live performances, concerts, or theater. The Dolby Atmos Live Panner is based on the Dolby Music Panner as an iPad application to enable real-time, low-latency panning control of Atmos audio object in a live environment. With this tool, you can now take control of an audio object with an intuitive and creative workflow to pan, create snapshots, and trigger pan automations, including an auto-trigger feature while chasing an LTC timecode. Let's look at the workflow. You may send up to 128 channels of audio to our renderer via MADI using 10 bed channels and 118 objects. You will recognize this as the standard Atmos workflow for those who have already mixed an Atmos for cinema or music. The iPad app works as a remote client, and it can be used via Wi-Fi or wired over a private network. No audio will be lost if you lose connection. Let's go ahead and create a new project. Under the settings icon located at the top right corner of the touchscreen, you can create or recall a project. Select the Show or Config mode, connect to the renderer by entering its IP address, along with the timecode feature, which we'll discuss later in the video. The top portion of the screen will display the project name, connection status, Show or Config mode, along with timecode when chasing timecode. The tabs at the bottom of the screen will be the main pages for navigating the app. Front of house mixers will decide what audio sources become an object a drum group versus an individual channel of the drum kit. This is done on the mixing console directly. Here, I am using my drum bus to send post fader to our renderer on input MADI 11 and 12. I am also using my stereo bus for redundancy. We will label and select pairing for each object under the objects tab. Let's start with the panner view. Here, you can control every individual object using the scrollable strip at the top portion of the app to select an object. This enables you to view each object position one at a time. In order to move an object in the room, simply place your finger in the XY pan window and move the object. You can also define the X, Y, and Z coordinates by the use of the rotary knobs on the surface. The pinch motion is also used to adjust the size of the object. Stereo objects will follow the linking mode selection. Copy, Mirror X, Mirror Y, or Mirror XY. Elevation modes are used to automate the height plane. Flat, Sphere, Wedge, and Ceiling. The Panner page is also where you create pan automations what we call pan presets. A different pan preset can be assigned to each object. It does not matter on which object the preset has been created. To create a preset, make sure you are in config mode. Then tap the record button on the bottom left portion of the screen. You can now choose one of four tools to draw your path. The freeform tool, straight line, a circle, or a square. With the Freeform tool, you can draw the path freely. This will be recorded in real time and played back at the exact speed in which it was created. As soon as you place a finger in the pan window, it will start writing the automation. Upon release, the path will stop and loop until you hit the Stop Record button and name the preset. You also have options to cancel or overwrite an existing preset. You can also choose a predefined shape to write a preset, the straight line, circle or square, where you need to define the duration of the pan preset, and set the rotation direction or round trip mode, then drag your finger in the pan window to draw your selected shape. The object will automatically preview your path upon release. You can then press the stop record button to name your preset. For every new preset, the linking mode, elevation and loop mode will be saved and recalled. You can also assign any preset to a stereo object, even if it was created from a mono object. You can assign pan presets by opening the preset selection box. Preview each preset by toggling through the library and quickly assigning a preset to any objects. The play button will preview the object in real time. 
The loop toggle switch is used to loop any desired preset on an object. The pan preset will loop until you stop it manually by hitting the stop button. On the right side of the window is a speed slider. This will adjust the speed of your preset in real time, up or down 10x the original speed. Remember, every object has its own preset. As you toggle between your objects, the selected preset will display its path in the pan window. From here, I will show you how to set and recall snapshots. Snapshots are global static positions of all your objects in order to quickly recall positions for each song, for example. The snapshot page delivers a holistic view of all your object positions. By default, objects are set in left and right for stereo objects and center for mono objects. The active snapshot is listed on the top right section of the page, as well as in the snapshot list. To create a new snapshot, hit the New Snapshot button. This will automatically save the current positions of all your objects. The Snapshot List window displays your library of snapshots. The Object Selection window will allow you to display selected objects in the Pan Window Overview, but also allow you to adjust their positions. To edit and build snapshots, select one or more objects in the Object Selection List. As they are displayed in the pan window, you can then move them around together. You can rename, duplicate, or delete snapshots by highlighting a snapshot and tapping the three dots to display the options. If you choose to modify a snapshot, the Save or Cancel selection above the pan window will highlight. This will give you the option to confirm or cancel any changes. Recalling a snapshot will effectively terminate any ongoing presets. Let's now go ahead and explore our events page for automating pen presets and snapshots. Events is a powerful programming tool that lets you trigger multiple pen presets at the same time or combine a sequence of pen presets. You can also populate each event with snapshots. First, let's make sure we are in config mode. Then create an event. You can name the event using the event options by tapping the three dots on the event line. Click add to assign an action to an event. Let's explore adding a pan preset. Choose which preset to assign. You can then assign one or multiple objects to a single pan preset. Hit done to confirm. From here, you can now choose how many rotations the objects will take for the selected pan preset, from 1 to 10, or loop until manually stopped. We have now created an event that can be previewed in real time using the play icon in the event name box. We have also added a couple of features to allow even more flexibility. The glide and weight functions. The glide function is comparative to a crossfade of an object. The object will move from its current position to the starting point of the assigned pan preset or snapshot. Glide is set in seconds, up to 10 seconds. The wait function is used to sequence multiple actions within an event by adding a wait time before the action is triggered. Let's add another preset to the current event. Choose a preset, assign two objects, Let's make sure here not to assign to the same objects as our previous preset, and choose a repeat time. Here, both our presets within our event will trigger at the exact same time the event is recalled. Now if I add a wait time of 10 seconds to my latest preset, this action will wait 10 seconds before triggering. I can keep adding presets and snapshots to wait time of 60 seconds. By default, at the end of each event, unless a pan preset is still looping, all my objects will revert to their original positions. However, I may choose to recall a snapshot to terminate any ongoing presets from an event, or simply for a transition to a different snapshot. Now let's add a snapshot to the same event and choose a wait time of 30 seconds. As I trigger my event, the two presets will play in sequence triggering their assigned objects, 
and after 30 seconds, every object will automatically revert to my recalled snapshot position. Without a glide time, my object will jump back into place. But if I add a glide time, you will see every object smoothly glide back to the recalled snapshot. As you can see, programming events can be the centerpiece of the Atmos performance, allowing the front of house engineer to focus on the mix and maintain their established workflow while triggering complex pan automations. Now let's look at the hotkeys page to quickly trigger all your automations. The hotkeys page lets you assign quick triggers for presets, snapshots, and events. With eight pages of hotkeys, you can easily program and personalize each layout given your preferred workflow. To assign an action to a hotkey, ensure config mode is enabled, and then tap the assign selection. You can now assign any event, snapshot, or single pan preset to a hotkey. The name of the action will display on the hotkey trigger, along with its associated color coding. Blue for events, green for snapshots, and purple for pan presets. When triggering an action, the hotkey will light up with its color code to display an active automation, and will turn off as soon as the action is done. Last but not least is the timecode feature. The timecode feature will enable the renderer to receive an LTC timecode and allow you to automatically trigger events at a desired timestamp. To enable timecode, in config mode, navigate to the settings page. Simply toggle your timecode switch to the on position and select your desired frame rate. Most frame rates are compatible. 2398, 24, 25, 2997, and 30 frames per second. You will notice the timecode display at the center top of your screen in real time. In order to assign events to a time, navigate back to the timecode page and hit the new timecode button. Enter the desired timestamp for which you will want your event to trigger and simply assign an event from the list. As seen in the events page, you can preview each event in real time from the play icon on every event assigned. You can add as many timecode events as you wish. This feature will allow you to completely focus on your mix and simply monitor every automation from the Dolby Atmos renderer during your show without manually triggering any actions from the application. As you can see, the Dolby Atmos Live Panner offers a complete new way of thinking about your mix. With multiple workflows adoptable for each user, this creative platform will guide you in delivering the most amazing experience to your audience in Atmos. We hope you enjoyed this video. For any inquiries or questions, please feel free to reach out to us at liveeventaudio at dolby.com. Look out for any upcoming Atmos experiences at a concert venue near you.